<laughs> today, I woke up today not at all expecting to be talking about the Nintendo Switch quotes pro for the entirety <laughs> of the day. New Nintendo Switch, uh, the Nintendo Switch SP, the Nintendo <laughs> Switch X, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's here, it's real, and it's okay. It's okay. It's, it's okay. just okay. It's uh, okay, people. It's almost as if we've been talking about this uh, for many months, Will. It's 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 yeah. been it's been uh, quite the topic here here on the podcast. Um, in we've one form or another. Yes, and we've specifically been. It's like been once a month we get news from Bloomberg. Our buddies over at Bloomberg saying some yes. garbage about a uh, uh, Switch Pro and 4K and whatnot. And uh, and every every month we go. I don't know about this. I don't know about this one, <laughs> and I'm sure all you people have been seeing uh, stuff from YouTubers, yeah. including myself. Uh, every time there's new Switch Pro rumors, there's like a million videos about it. Um, and now finally, uh, we have some. Uh, what would you call it? A closure <laughs> on the topic. At, um, it's not exactly closure. It's an answer. Yeah, that's the best I can say. It's an answer. True. It may not be the answer you were looking for. But it is an answer to the question, is there a new iteration of the Nintendo Switch coming? That answer yes. is yes. You're saying Will is rather quiet. That is a possibility because uh, we change things. Don't do anything, Will. I'm not touching anything. I will do it. Okay. I will take a drink then. Uh, <laughs> say, say a few words, Will. Uh, this is me saying a few words. I will say that for those of you listening to the audio version of this ah. on, on uh, Anchor.fm yes. slash Wolf Den Podcast or your preferred service of choice, iTunes, Google Podcasts, what have you, uh, this will be the first Wolf Den Podcast of any iteration to not be created using Audacity. Why not? Apparently they're they're bad now. <laughs> you didn't hear what, about that? What happened? Audacity got bought by another company, and that company um, basically added in the terms of service to version three of Audacity. Uh, they have the right to sell your data. Oh, like any for any data they collect from you, they can sell it. See you later, Audacity. You have Audition. Just use yeah, Audition. So, I, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna start using Audition. I I I, I think I used Audacity because I didn't have Audition in the beginning and just used it out of habit. But right now that I have it, yeah, I there's no no excuse. Is Will too loud now? He should be fine. I'll lower you just a little bit. <laughs> uh, next time we do this. So so we have a lot of issues here. Uh, always. Mm -hmm. All the time. Uh, yes. if the last couple podcasts, Will was a little choppy and, 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 uh, and whatever. Uh, now he is perfectly in sync. However, he looks like a potato. So uh, yes. <laughs> at least he's in sync though. And that's, that's why the yeah. audio is messed up because he's going through the web browser now. Um, yeah. If you care about that, anyway, uh, we want to talk. By next week, I will hopefully look good. <laughs> I'm sure there's a setting I forgot to hit that I will look try. into, and I will fix that. Next time, try Chrome instead of Firefox. See what happens, or, or yeah. Safari. Yeah, I think that might. Because honestly, like I look fine in my preview window. I don't mm -hmm. know what the deal is over here. There's also like a noise situation going on every time you talk, but uh, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't. I don't know what the deal is with that. Is it I, my I, fan? I, is it picking? Is it picking up my fan? Maybe. I mean, I have my freaking uh, air conditioning on. I'm not turning that off. Don't turn your fan off. It's freaking. It is. Oh, turning, oh it's only seventy three. Turning right it now. down. Turning I don't it think down. it's yeah, the fan. Seventy three, but it's like it's humid AF. Wasn't it ninety four today? Something like that. I don't think it was the fan. It sounded like just like a general like 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 audio uh, noise. Um, please keep your fans on. Don't cook yourself. It it, it was freaking hot today, uh, and then it yeah. it rained like crazy. There's a lot of wind. Anyway, we're getting off topic. We want to talk. I wanted to get yes. into the Nintendo uh, uh, new Nintendo Switch news as quickly as possible because I know a lot of people are going to be watching this and a lot of people are going to be interested in that. But at yes. the 
at the end of uh, every time there's a new month we always yeah, talk at the beginning about of every month the other guys tell you about the free games you can get for ps plus in xbox live games with gold so we will plow through those real quick um there's games you've heard of and games you don't care about Yes, so, and, and if you have any of these subscriptions like Xbox Live or PlayStation Plus or whatever, you got free games. So uh, this is yeah, a service so, we do to you. Okay? Yes. You're welcome. So on PlayStation Plus, starting today, you can get Call of Duty Black Ops 4 on the PS4, WWE 2K Battlegrounds on the PS4, and A Plague Tale Innocence on the PS5 only. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, do they still have the Battle Royale for Black Ops? Uh, I don't know. Blackout brings together characters, locations, weapons, and gear from across the series in all-out survival combat, all with a unique Black Ops twist. Interesting. Okay, so now you can play the Blackout mode for free. Nice. That's uh, cool. Call of Duty. This was, of course, the infamous multiplayer-only Call of Duty Black Ops. Um, I think, uh, did you like this aside from Blackout? I did. I did. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mostly liked it for I, Blackout. Um, yeah, but I wasn't like like huge into it. But I did like I did like it. Yeah. Um. What else um, we got? We got Battlegrounds. This is the Battlegrounds. So this was the game they made because two K WWE two K twenty was so bad. They needed a year off to reconfigure. But in the meantime, <laughs> they put out this like. You know, fun, arcadey, you know, not so serious wrestling game that apparently is also very bad. I will okay. download it, play as Becky Lynch once, and then never play it again. Uh, and then finally, A Plague Tale Innocence the, on the PS5. I know this game has like a really big cult following. It's about like uh, living during the plague and like dealing with that. Oh, oh, look at all the rats. Ew. Yeah. Um, also, I should note that uh, Virtual Fight of Five Ultimate Showdown, which was last month's PS Plus game, is still available mm. to PS Plus subscribers. Interesting. So if you missed it last month, you have another chance to get it this month. Uh, okay. Uh, somebody in the chat says, uh, do you guys still do uh, PS Now editions? Because Red Dead Redemption 2 and some others this month. Uh, we usually don't because PlayStation Now usually has bad stuff. Oh, you have it here. You have you yeah. actually have the article. Yeah, I, I included it because I, A, I figured we should start including it if we're going to do right. Game Pass. And You're B, right. because yes, uh, spoiler alert, Red Dead Redemption 2 is going to be added. Oh, Neo. Neo's a big deal. Yeah. Neo is like a... It's like a fast uh, team. Yeah, it's Team Ninja's version of Dark Souls. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Team Ninja, I, I they, they did uh, sh based... the Shinobi games, the, the 3D no, Shinobi games. No, Team Ninja did Team Ninja, Ninja, Ninja Gaiden. Gaiden. Uh, you know, same same situation. Yeah. So it's Red Dead Redemption 2, uh, Neo 2. And why aren't you scrolling down? Moving out. Oh, moving I want to try moving out. That's cool. Well, I don't have PlayStation now, and I'm not. I'm not about to get it. God of War, okay. Oh, Judgment. What is Judgment? Judge, that's like that. That's a Yakuza spinoff. Okay, spinoff. It's like it's actually part of the Yakuza series. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. And Olympic Games Tokyo. Wow, there's a lot. NASCAR Heat Five. Yeah. All right. Let's let's keep let's keep moving here. Um, so, games with gold uh, for the Xbox One, uh, which is available for the entire month of July. It's Planet Alpha. Never heard of it. Uh, from July sixteenth to August fifteenth, you have Rock of Ages three make and break um, on the Xbox three hundred and sixty and original Xbox, which you can play on your Xbox One or Series X. Um, from today until the 15th, it's Conquer Live and Reloaded. And from the 16th to the 31st is Midway Arcade Origins. Uh, Conquer uh, Live and Reloaded, that is not, uh, it has nothing to do with the uh, the old dirty Conquer. No, it does. 
It does? Conquer Live Con Conquer Live and Reloaded is the original Xbox remake of the N64 game. Oh my god, I don't know. Anything. It's called Live and Reloaded because it has a bigger focus on the online multiplayer. Oh. But it, it is a, it is a full remake of the original N64 you know, so you get the sunflower with the boobs. You get the sunflower with the big boobs. You get to fight the the great big mighty poo. You get to the level where you pee on things. Uh, I know there are like differences to it. There's mild censorship with like some of the the more off color jokes. Um, I think they made some sections of the game easier, but other than that, it's it's basically the same game. If you've never played it before, now's your chance to play it. Okay. Good and to know. The Midway Arcade Origins collection is 30 um, Midway games, uh, including Defender, Gauntlet, uh, Rampart, and more. Interesting. Okay. Uh, not the best. X Xbox Live has the been kind of going down the toilet. Because yeah. there's Game Pass. There is Game Pass. Being added to Game Pass this month. Uh, for Cloud, you got The Medium, which is a new game. That's the game. Th that's the game that they showed off at the Xbox showcase a while ago. Yeah. That had two simultaneous versions of the world running at the same time. So, like, this was like a this was to yeah. showcase the power of the Series X. So, this is like a big yeah. deal that this is part of uh, Game Pass, but it's only via the cloud. Yeah. Which I guess means you can play it on anything that supports Game Pass. So this, so, so that's, th th I think this was one of the only games that was an exclusive to Next Generation and also I think PC. Um, yeah. So th th that's why this was a big deal when it was announced. So now it's a yeah. big deal that if you don't have a Series X, but you have Game Pass, you can just freaking play it on your regular Xbox One. That's yeah. a pretty big deal. Yeah. Uh, also included is Dragon Quest Builders 2, um, also on cloud. Uh, EA Sports UFC 4 uh, on Xbox One and Series X. Um, Blood Roots for cloud console and PC. Tropico 6 for cloud console and PC. And Farming Simulator 2019 Let's go! for cloud console and PC. Let's go, Farming! Yeah. Uh, 2019, though. What, what's up with that? Was there a 2020? I don't know. Uh, the medium is... Yep, it's only available... Oh, it's also available on PlayStation 5 in September. So it's only a timed exclusive for Xbox. But it is not out on Xbox One. So that the, you could play it via the cloud now. It, it, uh, it's yep. official. But it is for PC. Um, I just want to know if it's on... If, if it's now just being announced that it's on the cloud or if it's or if it was always on game was pass. part of game pass yeah it might I have honestly always, don't know available now with xbox game pass get yeah. it now uh i feel like it was probably already on game pass because uh everything that's you know an xbox exclusive has been like released on game pass yeah. Uh, medium was part of Game Pass at launch. Okay, says Robo Jack. Yeah. So now it, that's a weird way to say it. Then they should have they should have said they, it should say here that it's now to the cloud, but also available in all the other stuff. Well, I think it. You know, they put it in the picture just what it's coming to for that month. Yeah, but then uh, in, in the when they go to the medium yeah, down here, say I got, say no, the other I got you, stuff. I got you. Uh, I'm gonna get it. Uh, can I? Here you go. I'm logged in. Why isn't it letting me do it? Get it now. Get it now, it's... dude. I don't know, dude. Sometimes when I try to like buy things from the Xbox Store on my browser, I have to like log in three times. Try the browser recommended by Microsoft. Get speed, security, and privacy with Microsoft Edge. Get out of my face. Get bent. Get bent. Get bent. Focus. Um. All right, so you can play the medium. That's everything I got out of all the free games for this month. 
Uh, you can play the medium, and uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 is free on PlayStation Now. Well, not free. It's part of PlayStation Now. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, and there was a good there was a good uh, PlayStation Plus game, wasn't there? Uh, Call of Duty 4. Black Call of Duty 4. 4. There you go. Wow. Well, and uh, a Plague Tale Innocence, if you're into that sort of thing. If you're into the weird stuff. Weird, wacky stuff. Uh, there you go. I'm going to read some notifications because we have to really start talking okay. about, about this new Nintendo Switch that everybody wants us to talk about. Uh, we got here. We got, well, we got a lot. Oh my God. I'm so sorry, guys. We got Spooby Girl <laughs> gifting a sub, Tyler H. Photo. We got Robo Jack with three months. Hiya, Bob. How's it going? It's going good. How are you? Uh, we got Elite Ben with four months. We got, uh, Sat satoru go jc thank you for the subscription we got travel with 100 bits yeah but that new kickstand though what a feature i'm gonna be honest it's a great that was a great move on their part um, that, that is a yeah it's a nice looking kickstand wd spyro girl thank you for the nine months uh man of steel thanks for the five bits hit me up with the number but i'll bother you with the switch no thank you uh, alicia b side thank you for the six months <laughs> Six months, boys love you. The Wolf Bros, I love you too. Spoopy Girl, thank you for the two hundo, the hundo, and then another hundo. Travel, thanks for the five hundo. Hey, Will, can you tell Bob to put apparel out again? <laughs> no, he can't. Alicia B side, thank you for the two I, hundo. I'm not allowed to. Travel Steinberg, thanks for another five. Spoopy, thanks for the hundo. Travel, thanks for the hundo. Phoenix, thanks for the nine. Switch looking super, looking sussy. Switch OLED switch looking sussy. That's a it's an Among Us meme, but I don't think. Guys, you gotta remember, I'm 34 years old. You gotta <laughs> chill it with the zoomer, with the zoomer lingo. Late Snake, thanks for the hundo. Dark Light, thank you for the hundo. I know a lot of people may have the same opinion as me, but the OLED switch just kind of looks boring to me. The white Joy Cons and dock and the bigger screen are nice looking though. Uh, I pretty much agree with you. Um, yeah. Mega Dragon, 100 bits. Bug Fables is also on Game Pass, bros. Y'all should try it. Uh, that was, that's was that been on there, I think. Um, C Soul, thank you for the 10 months. Anthony Carvoni, thank you for the eight, uh, seven months. I'm getting a dog. Oh my God, congratulations. Yay! Better be a rescue. Well, I guess every dog's a rescue if you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, oh, Travel says if we don't stop, he can't stop. So uh, thank you for the hundred. Uh, I'll stop right now. Um, when, uh, by the way, if you if you're like a podcast listener or you or you're on YouTube, or whatever, when I say a hundred bits, that's a hundred cents. <laughs> it's not like I'm saying like thanks for the hundred dollars, thanks for the hundred dollars. No, it's a hundred cents. Um, anyway, um, oh hi Rue, welcome welcome to the podcast um so finally uh, after 22 he, he heard minutes somebody was getting a dog he heard someone was getting a dog yes after 22 minutes we can finally talk about the oled nintendo switch um it's here yay they, uh, they today it's they here. were like they were like hey the wolfden's doing a podcast tonight so we better get this out uh before they do that yeah they However, did it early in the morning, so we're not scrambling for information on it like an hour before. Nah, I'm mad about that. They know I sleep until the late afternoon. They should have waited. Well, they know that your partner has to wake up early because that's when his daughter wakes up. So he was on the case. You know, a phone call would have been nice, Will. Hey, Bob, wake up. You got work to do. I only wake you up when I accidentally cancel your orders. <laughs> <laughs> like important things. So here it is, the Nintendo Switch OLED model. Oh, that absolutely will be available horrible name. For release on, it will be available for release on October 8th, 2021, the same day as Metroid Dread. Um, oh. oh. And, yes. This is bad. Because <laughs> that's the weekend of too many games. Oh. This also is the weekend of New York Comic Con. This is bad. The hell did Rue just do? Oh, he got a bone. He just smashed his face against the wall. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> anyway, that's a horrible weekend. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. I, I, I got to somehow get... Wait, it comes out the 8th. That's a Friday. Yeah. Okay. All right. If you I, get it in the morning... Oh, there's lightning. And then spend all Friday 
spend all Friday night just fiddling with it. I have and to Metroid. I have to. So I'll go to Comic Con on Thursday. Uh -huh. I will on Friday go to the Nintendo store, wait in line, and get it. And then uh, I guess I'll make a video on Friday. Oh, and I'll I'll go to too many games and spend Saturday and Sunday at too many games. What a horrible weekend that's gonna be. October's gonna suck. Oh uh, yeah, good times. Anyway, uh, so here it is. It's the OLED model switch. It's three hundred and fifty dollars for a three forty nine ninety nine MSRP. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot to unpack here. We knew that I mean it was rumored that there was going to be a 4k switch or, or there's going to be a switch iteration that was going to have 4k and whatever and Bloomberg was really driving home mm -hmm. the point that there was going to have all this stuff in it that was going to make it capable of 4k resolutions and whatever and we kept saying here if you're a podcast listener you know what we said we were like I don't know about all that sounds like Nintendo doesn't give a shit about 4k it sounds like this thing's just going to be just a just a different switch just going to be a, an iteration yeah. on the current switch the thing that really tripped me up was the 350 dollars price point we talked about this like a month ago we said that seems weird uh if it's truly not going to be a 4k switch uh it'd be weird to spend it'd be weird to charge 350 dollars um so we always I mean, thought it was just going to replace the current Switch model. And it doesn't look like it is. It doesn't look like they're going to stop selling the original Switch model anytime soon. So here's what's freaking me out. It's called the Nintendo Switch OLED model. Right. Which is weird because it's not called the Nintendo it's Switch Lite model. You know? If they're going to sell all yeah. three of them at the same time, it would be... The Nintendo, it, it should have a name. It shouldn't just be the Nintendo yeah, Switch. Like, the OLED it should have been one. like the Switch. Yeah, the Switch Pro or the new Nintendo oh, Switch something. or or yeah, yeah, so, something. Yeah. So so, uh, the, I feel like this was supposed to replace the current Switch model, and then they were like, "Wait a minute, we can make fifty more dollars," because they know they they this Switch is already selling like crazy. They totally could have sold the current Switch for $350 and probably have sold just as much. So uh, this was their way of being like, we kind of missed the price point. We, we could have charged more. And now they're trying yeah. to nickel and dime you. Um, so that, that kind of sucks. Especially because there's nothing crazy about this. It's literally just a bigger screen. Well, it ha it has some new features, and some are some of them are welcome. Uh, in fact, all the new features I would say are welcome. Um, but uh, overall, there doesn't seem to be anything significant um, that would warrant an additional fifty dollars. They mm -hmm. really could have just replaced because the the chipset in the Switch itself is unchanged still the same amount of ram it's still the same custom tegra chip still the same battery so they could have just quietly phased out the original switch replaced it with this for the same 299 price point and i don't think anybody would have batted an eye no not at all so I, people, they're basically people would have been like this is sick if, if that was the case yeah. I, I think the 50 dollars kind of sullies a, it a 50 50 premium for all these features that honestly probably should have been there at launch I mean, that's the way that they always do this, though. It's always, uh, they always mess up the first version a little bit, and then they slowly make some iterations that, uh, that fix it, you know? Well, like, when we talk about, when we, when we talk about the new features, you'll see that these are features that, you know, probably should have been there from the beginning, uh, that their competitors, you know, have already taken care of for a while now, um, and that it's, really you know baffling that after five years this is these these are the things that nintendo uh thought were worth upgrading right i'm trying to see so i'm on the i'm on the japanese nintendo site because the 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 website's just a lot cooler they like lay out the features way <laughs> way cooler than than our site um 
but I'm trying to see if the price difference is similar on the Japanese on, on the Japanese website. Like how much was the original Nintendo Switch in Japan? Oh, uh, 32,000 yen or 33,000 yen. So this one, wait a minute. 37 oh, 38,000 yen. Okay. So it's 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 yeah, it's 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 uh pretty much the same. Um so anyway, features. Uh it's the one they're showing off has white Joy-Cons and a white dock. Love the fact that the color in the dock. Yeah. Awesome. Uh a little disappointed that the actual switch is still black. But uh it yeah. is what it is. Well, so they're primarily hmm. showing the the white Joy-Con version with the white dock. Yes. Um, that And that's good. That signifies that this is a new model of Switch, regardless of features and price and whatnot. They're also selling a Switch OLED model with a black dock and blue and red Joy-Cons. Yes, and, and they're the same neon ones that we've seen since the launch of the Switch. Yes. So this essentially just looks like what, you know, the version I have already. Yeah. So why, if you're trying to push this as the new version of it, why would you make it look exactly like the last version? Yeah, I don't like the, the I, I mean, I appreciate that there's a black version of the dock. That's totally fine. I'm cool with that. The Joy-Con should be a different color, because yeah, we're, we're, but that uh, that again, I feel like this wasn't supposed to be a a, a, a like. Th th I feel like this was supposed to replace the current Switch. Yeah, and, and that's why this looks like this. And also, they've said to the Verge, I think it was, they've confirmed that the. Uh, Joy Cons are exactly the same. Oh no, they actually said it yeah. in a tweet. Uh, Nintendo said the Joy Cons are exactly the same, and any Joy Cons that you currently have will work on this. Uh, so yeah, and we also knew that was going to happen because they weren't going to change the size of the Switch and the rails and whatever. Um, so that means yes, they're the they probably haven't fixed any of the drift issues. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it is what it is. Um. But yeah, I would have liked to have seen different colors. At least, I, I appreciate the black, but would have liked to have seen different colors. Um, yeah. Anyway. Uh, the white looks cool. I'm cool, I'm, I'm cool yes. with the white. Yeah, no, it definitely does. What else do we have on this bad ball? Oh, the OLED um, screen, the biggest, the biggest yes, thing that this thing has. Seven-inch OLED screen. Feast your eyes on vivid colors and crisp contrast when you play on the go. See the difference uh, the vibrant screen makes whether you're racing at top speed or squaring off against enemies. So OLED uh, is a technology we've had for a while. It just it, it's yes. more vivid colors. I think there's deeper blacks. I think I think uh, yeah. I don't know exactly how it works. Um, uh, I know it's a, something we've had for a while. Phones have been using it for a while. TVs right. are now just starting to use it. The original model of the PlayStation Vita, the one I own, has an OLED screen. Um, I saw a lot of tweets that's like, the Vita walks so the Switch can run <laughs> or something like that. I think it's a more expensive thing to have, but it does do... It, some people say it's better for battery life. Other people say it's 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 really uh a case by case basis whether or not it, it, it helps it is, battery life or not it is more expensive more expensive technology um i, I can tell you from like experience shopping in terms of tvs it adds a thousand dollars to the price mm -hmm. like no matter what you want an oled tv um it does it does like most things i've heard it's like better on battery life overall um, the picture quality is a big step up from, you know, LCD and LED screens. Um, so this will look fantastic. In fact, part of the reason why it's launching with Metroid Dread is because they designed Dread to take advantage of this screen. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, not saying it's not going to look good on a regular Switch or a Switch Lite. 
I, I think there's something to do with the with the deeper blacks in OLED. Yeah. Um, I think it, like like on a regular LCD screen, when it's when the when the screen is on, and there's like a completely black image, you could still kind of tell that it's on. But an OLED yeah. screen, uh, when it's completely black, it might look off. Um, yeah. And that's like they actually to... turn the pixels off. Yeah, and that's what's supposed to like help save battery life. But uh, yeah. again, it's it depends on what's actually happening on screen. Um, so yeah, uh, so even though the screen is gonna be more vivid and and better looking, uh, I it has the same amount of battery life uh, as as a, as a yeah. current generation Switch, and it has the same internals. Nintendo confirmed. Uh, uh where is it nintendo confirms there's no cpu or ram upgrade in the oled switch model uh after months of switch pro rumors i'm not gonna read all that nintendo switch oled model does not have a new cpu or more ram from previous nintendo switch models says the verge uh but somewhere it confirmed that i remember reading that it was a oh it was like the, the uh i said it in my video today uh <laughs> uh the gamer or something or, or whatever uh they said that it was a uh, uh it had the same 4.5 to 9 hour battery life that we currently have yeah um so yeah i mean the screen's gonna be much cooler i'm glad there's no bezel it looks way better without the bezel i think the bezel was a oh, giant yeah. mistake to begin with because it looked it made it look like a freaking uh uh it, it made it look made like, it look an old like a iPad. cheap yeah like a cheap kindle fire yeah it was kind of gross and and now yeah. now it looks a lot better uh also i noted in my video today um since there's no bezel they put the little light sensor t on the top instead of on the where the bezel is so uh, if it's mm -hmm. dark in your room you know it, basically this is what controls the auto brightness um so if yeah. you have like a live-in case for your switch and you want to put it on this like a nerf case or something uh it'll obstruct that and you won't be able to do auto brightness if that matters to you at all that's the only accessory i can think of that won't work with both also the kickstand well i saw might something this might be get, this might be getting a little ahead of ourselves um but i saw something you know the flip grip yes it's a it's a peripheral for those of you who don't know it you can play you can use it to play with the switch vertically for Flip grip classic uh, arcade game use code wolf Den, uh save some money i think we have a there you sponsor. go um that was designed for the original switch because it uses the notch in the back the to, like, notch line things the up yeah, on the bottom where the the, where the uh the usb c cord goes yeah, yeah this notch the, yeah yeah um the switch the switch oled model does not have that notch it looks like it does. So, it ha it has a little like uh, hole, but it's a different it's a different kind of notch. Oh, yeah, weird. Somebody in the chat said your switch will work in both docks and vice versa, but if the notch is different, that's weird. Oh, here's a better I picture. Think this, the height of the notch maybe but like the the depth of it is different it looks like it has the notch it looks longer actually yeah it might be because of the, the kickstand obscures it so maybe the, it just looks like it's different was it would you find this in a tweet or something yeah it was the guy who created the flip grip I'll see if I can find it. Yeah, see if you can find that, because I'd be interested to see more about that. Um, I mean, I have a flip grip somewhere, too. I could check that out. Um, but yeah, let's talk about the dock. Uh, here on the Japanese website, you get this cool little animation. Whoa, it's crazy. Uh, the dock is much better now, because the previous dock uh, falls over easily and falls out very easily. Um, this looks like it's going to be nice and solid. You're not going to break this thing, and uh, it will keep your switch nice and sturdy um currently also, if, currently if you stand your switch up and you hit the corner it'll just fall down and this one looks like that's not gonna happen also the big new thing that this stock adds is a LAN port 
So you oh, can yes. connect, you can directly connect your Switch to the internet via an Ethernet cable. This is, believe it or not, the first Nintendo console to include an Ethernet port by default. Yes. Without an GameCube adapter. GameCube did not have it. You had to buy it separately. The Wii was Wi-Fi only. You had to buy an adapter. The same with the Wii U and the original Switch. And the LAN adapter you buy right now for the Switch is the exact same LAN adapter that you would buy for the Wii U. Yeah. Oh, that's how old this thing. And I think it might even be the same for the Wii, to be honest. Probably. Um, so you are losing the internal USB 3.0 port and you are gaining a LAN port, which is totally fine yes. by me because currently the internal port on my dock is for the LAN adapter. So I'm totally cool with losing that. It also looks like this better cable management. You got this little like like loop here that looks like it's it's yeah it fits cables better. Um now I I said this in my video, but I deleted it because I thought it was a little complicated and a little too nuanced for people, and I'm not even sure if it's true. But uh, when the switch came out, uh, the internal dock, the internal port is blue. The internal USB 3.0 port is blue, meaning it's 3.0. However, the switch doesn't support 3.0 out of the uh, the 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 USB C port. So that means the dock doesn't work with 3.0 devices. It still limits it to 2.0 speeds. And I don't think they ever updated it. I remember like a year or two ago, I noticed that uh, the um, I noticed that the the LAN adapter speeds were faster all of a sudden. So it seemed mm -hmm. like they updated something, but I never got like confirmation that that internal port is now working as a 3.0 port. Um, so. I don't know. We do, we don't know if these uh, ports on the sides are are 2.0 or 3.0. It doesn't say here. We don't know if this HDMI port, like what version HDMI it is. I think I think the ports are 2.0. Uh, I don't know. Seeing, I remember seeing that somewhere. Because just because they're not blue doesn't mean that they're 2.0. You know. No, I know. But I, I forgot what article it was. Said it was 2.0. Bruce playing with my my uh it inti creates uh tote bag how dare you that's a collector's item um so the whole chat is blowing up about bluetooth you're not getting bluetooth oh yes <laughs> uh Here's my One of the things bag. we thought we would get in addition to 4K output was some sort of support for Bluetooth audio. Uh, that is not the case. <laughs> I I didn't think this was ever going to happen. It was just like wishful thinking for Nintendo to do something like that. Uh, there should be Bluetooth audio, especially in the dock at least. But it should yeah. really be in the in the Switch itself. Um. You can still get an adapter and plug it in. Uh, you won't be able to plug it into the inside. It will have to be sticking out the side now, uh, yeah. which is a little disappointing if that's something that you do. Uh, but it's really not the end of the world. Uh, basically, if you do that, maybe just don't upgrade because there's really no reason to. You know, if you're playing in docked, if you're playing in docked, no reason to upgrade because uh, all you're getting is a LAN adapter and that costs $30. It's not worth paying three hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. If you play mostly handheld, you might uh, get a better looking screen, and that's uh, about it. Well, not just a better looking screen, Bob. You also oh. get a kickstand. <laughs> yes, the kickstand. Yes. Uh, oh, on and a more serious note. Yes. You also get a bigger uh, storage space. You get sixty-four gigs of internal storage. Which is double the 32 in the in the launch version, and you get enhanced audio. Yeah, so they, 64 they gave, they gigabytes is a big deal because the 32 gigabytes that the Switch came with was not enough. That is not enough at all. No, upgrading to 64 is awesome. 
uh, Switch games, I mean, 64 is still not that much, but uh, Six, yeah, Nintendo first party games are really tiny. So you can fit a lot of first party Nintendo games on 64 gigabytes of internal memory. You you can, but phones don't even come at 64 gig standard anymore. Mm-hmm. And I, I still feel like, I mean, don't get me wrong, this is better. This is significantly better. But it's, I feel like it's still not enough. Yeah, like, yeah. It no. should have been 64 at launch, and this should have been 128. Yeah, it's 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 a very marginal uh, upgrade. Uh, this whole thing is as a marginal upgrade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but it's a marginal upgrade. Five years on. Also, of you reminded me. Uh, at the bottom here, it says mm-hmm. uh, TV mode, uh, tabletop mode, and k tie mode, which means phone mode. Huh. But they're using it as like hand, they're using that as handheld mode. Yeah. And I asked my teacher, does that just mean handheld? Like, could I say a Game Boy is a k tie? And he's like, no. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I don't know why they did that. It's very weird. Um, Okay, so I found the tweet from Mike Choi, the creator of the Flip Grip. He said, mm-hmm. "It's due to the lack of back vents on the on the Switch LED." Oh, oh, yeah, because it has those little. The original Switch has those little vents on the bottom, right? It's got, uh, it's got and these. The guys. new Switch does not, because the kickstand takes up all that space. They could. They didn't put a hole there. Oh. So where the hell are the vents? Oh, it's a, it's it's oh. all the way at the bottom. See that? They're all the yeah, way at okay. the bottom. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, interesting. So, oh, does the flip grip cover the bottom bottom? That's probably why the flip grip covers that. Interesting. Does the yeah. satisfy grip cover that? Oh, mine's in the satisfy. No, it should not. Co- it might cover it a little bit, but uh, not too much. It doesn't look like it does. It, it it would probably cover it a little. Which probably isn't the end of the world. Um, we'll also no, note- it's like just it just barely covers. Okay, the satisfy grip. That's good. Uh, yeah. I think that it looks uh, like there's even space. Philip from Satisfied texted me today and said and said um uh it might not fit in here though because of the uh the the newer Joy-Cons have thicker paint. Mm. So that could be an issue. So I mean you never know until you freaking get the thing. Yeah. Anyway, you also got the new audio. Uh they don't really explain what is better about it. They just say it's better. Um, yeah. It looks like the speaker holes are bigger. Uh, currently, I think these are the speaker holes. These little things on the, on the, uh, these little holes in the bezel. Bevel or bezel? Mm-hmm. I just thought it was bezel. Bezel, right? I think that's what I've been saying. Yeah. But what is bevel? Is that different? Yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah, the holes are little tiny things, and now they're they're they look a little longer. Uh, I think the audio has been great on the Switch. I don't really see a reason to to upgrade that, but whatever whatever they want to do. Uh, the website says the OLED model is a tiny bit longer, so will the Satisfy Group fit it? Interesting. Where does it say that? Hmm. I mean, I, I was also thinking I know. like, like the the if you're gonna increase the screen size, it's not just you can't just like scale it up because then it looks weird. You do yeah. have to you do have to do something about it. Bevel is a rounded edge, is it? Yeah, I was I was just looking that up. Then what is a chamfer? Oh, it's the opposite of a, that's that's <laughs> like, that's like a like a concave edge. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, 
I do like the way the the new dock design. I wish it was smaller. There's no reason for it to be this friggin' big. Uh, I like the rounded corners. I like the tiny little switch logo. I like the indent. I like the glossiness. It's cool. They probably made it. They probably make it big so it covers up the screen, but at the same time, it you can just have it standing there like a phone dock does. It's not gonna yeah. bother anything. Oh, they're saying uh, chamfer is a flat edge, like a forty-five degree cut flat edge. Okay. Um. So anyway, I think that's everything. I think we talked about everything new. Yeah, we the have big here. things. It's got a bigger internal storage, enhanced audio, uh, built-in uh, LAN port, better kickstand, and the the OLED screen. That's uh, it. Yes, yes. Biggest deal: bigger screen, LAN port, and it's three hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> yeah. uh, which is pro which is uh, pretty upsetting. Um. Oh, I also have here. Uh, I I opened up Nintendo Life because there's a lot. They they the whole friggin' cover of Nintendo Life is all articles about this. Um. Uh. After months of Switch Pro rumors, Nintendo officially unveils the Nintendo Switch OLED model. Uh. They say where to pre-order it. Uh, oh oh. Uh, some people in the chat were talking about how you can purchase the dock separately. Yes. Uh, which uh, I was gonna say the dock is you can buy the dock separately but you can only buy it from nintendo directly the white dock and black dock will be sold separately no hdmi cable no ac adapter get out of here dude uh not in a package what on the nintendo online store it will not be sold at retail that's dumb it's probably gonna be expensive uh yeah that's really that's that's really dumb that it doesn't come with an ac adapter uh i used to tell people to get a refurbished dock because it was cheap uh but that also didn't come with an ac adapter but at least it was cheaper um yeah i don't think anybody should buy just the dock unless you want an additional dock um yeah be because the dock is for like a second bedroom or a second house it's the, not it's just a luxury thing the old dock i'm pretty sure came with an ac adapter it was a hundred dollars I, I think it also came with an hdmi cable damn uh there's no reason to get this dock it has a lan adapter dude the lan adapter is thirty dollars yeah there's no Probably reason cheaper. to get this dock you can is get gonna a be, generic one this dock's gonna be a hundred dollars no way it's not a hundred dollars and that's crazy yeah. That's going to be a hundred dollars. I mean, I'm, this is pure speculation, but if it's going to be a hundred dollars and they're not putting a freaking AC adapter in this, nobody should get the, the dock. That's crazy. It better be, if it's $50, maybe, but you can just buy a land adapter. It's really not crazy. Yeah. Uh, Cliff in the chat says, wasn't the old dock around a hundred dollars? Yes, but it also came yeah. with an HDMI cable and, and, a, and a, uh, uh, charger. Adapter. The charger is the biggest deal. Yeah, charger is surprisingly hard to come by, like an official Nintendo one. And the dock too. Now all of a sudden, yeah, the um, well, dock's and, even harder now. And you know how I feel about getting third-party ones. Yeah. Uh, hope uh, another. Hope that, I also hope that they fix the issues with the original dock. I hope that it's power uh, delivery compliant and everything. Uh, yeah. But chances are low that that's the case. It looks exactly the same with an added yeah. LAN adapter port. Here's something I found interesting. On the, the official Nintendo website mm -hmm. for the Switch OLED model, there's a there's an option to compare, to compare all three versions of the Switch to figure out which one is right for you. Mm -hmm. At the bottom, towards the bottom, there's a section for game compatibility. And it says... Nintendo Switch OLED model is compatible with the full library of Nintendo Switch games. However, the system will not cleanly fit within all of the design parameters of the Nintendo Labo series. There may Ooh. also be some games where the game experience may differ due to the new capabilities of the console, such as the larger screen size. Interesting. So the system itself does appear to be slightly bigger if it can't fit 
properly within the Labo system. Very interesting. That's something we'll have to we'll have to check out. So yeah, I guess there yeah. are going to be ex cases aren't going to work. That certain cases just won't work. I, I'd imagine most will, but uh, if they're really tight fitting, you, you might have a problem. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's also possible they don't include a charger at all. No, that can't be. It comes with a dock. No. They got to include a charger. <laughs> No, this this is a home system. This is a yeah. home console. It's 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 gonna come with. Um. Anyway, uh, there was something else I wanted to say. Oh, uh, Nintendo Life has something here that says yes, Switch OLED works with your old dock and vice versa. Uh, one of the questions for on the FAQ says, can this Nintendo Switch dock with LAN port also be used with Nintendo Switch? Okay. <laughs> um. Really? Yes, the dock can be used, including the LAN port. Uh, a system update may be required. Can the Nintendo Switch dock be used with the Nintendo Switch OLED model? Yes, this is possible. This is a terror. This is we're getting into Xbox territory labeling here <laughs> because Nintendo yeah. Switch means the old Nintendo Switch. The new one is called Nintendo Switch OLED model. The old yeah. dock is called Nintendo Switch dock. The new dock is called Nintendo Switch dock with a LAN port. <laughs> I hate this world that we live in now. Yeah. Uh, but basically they're saying it's going to work. They'll all work. Even if it's a little wider, even if it's, even if the back port's weird or the vents are weird, it's, they're still going to work. Yeah. That is weird actually, because the dock has vents for exactly where the vents are. Like the old dock has vents, yeah. like little vent holes. Interesting. If the oh, new, unless if the it's new like, one shoots air the out the spacing. bottom, that's weird. This uh, maybe the spacing between like the walls of the dock and like where the switch is is like enough for that can get airflow into. Right, it must be. Oh, yeah. Um. So, I want to bring up that we've been. We, I mean, we've been talking about freaking. The rumors we've been talking about for months have been all started basically by Bloomberg. They've been mm -hmm. really driving home the point that we're going to get a new Switch version. And, I mean, they weren't wrong about us getting a new Switch version. But they, the, the weird speculation that they did, they, they speculated as fact that we were getting a 4K Switch Pro. And uh, a lot of people ran with that. And I think that that kind of it's it's a bad vibe you know <laughs> definitely colored the way people's uh ex people's expectations of what this system would be i think it's i i think we have a right to be mad at bloomberg uh let's not you know be mad in the in the in the way that internet mobs are usually mad just don't yeah. just just don't uh just take their reporting with a grain of salt for for the next few months um it, it's kind of really uh, a shame that they literally every month they they were like here's a new bit about that switch pro 4k that we well, we heard about and they were like it's it's kind of dirty they were like legit farming for clicks yeah and i mean you know youtubers kind of took that and ran with it but also is it was getting a shit ton of views for people uh, talking about Switch Pro, um, but uh, we here at the Wolf Den always put a little put a little asterisk on there saying you're not getting 4K out of this motherfucker. At most, you might get some upscaling, but uh, yeah, we never expected not true 4K. We never expected uh, half of what they were touting. Uh, and I'm uh, part of why I'm bringing it up. We got this tweet from Gary Witta. Maybe instead of getting mad at Nintendo, who never said a word about what the specs of the new Switch model were going to be prior to revealing it, get mad at internet bullshitters for feeding you a bunch of unfounded rumors and speculation in exchange for your clicks. He's not wrong. Because, uh, but, but I mean, like, how would people know? Like, Bloomberg's supposed to be like a reputable company. And if they say something like that, if they report on something like that, I could see why other people would trust it. Again, we never did. We always said, 
this seems fishy. I don't know about all this. Um, but I could see why certain people would. Um, and then you got Modern Vintage Gamer clowning on him, saying, and yet here you are talking about the freaking Switch Pro rumors uh, farming for clicks. <laughs> Everyone's guilty of it. Um, yeah. I think, because the idea of a Switch Pro, a Switch with a Switch 4K, whatever you want to call it, uh, makes sense. You know, it, the thing was a, was a max, a 1080p system in an era of 4K of last generation, the PS4 and the Xbox One both had mid-console upgrade, mid, mid-life cycle upgrades that upgraded them to 4K systems, real 4K or otherwise. Um, it, it made sense that Nintendo would possibly follow in the same footsteps. Forgetting that Nintendo rarely, if ever, yes. follows <laughs> in the same footsteps as yes. the other two. Um, it now would have been the time for a 4K Switch. Um, two or three years ago would have been the time for a Switch OLED. <laughs> so, basically, if you want to get your Switch news, rumors, and speculation, youtube.com slash wolfden, twitch.tv slash wolfden, <laughs> youtube.com slash wolfden podcast. We were right about there not being 4k we were right about the bigger screen uh oled we believed bloomberg they were the ones who reported on the oled nonsense we were wrong about the price the fact that it wasn't going to replace the new one we were wrong that it wasn't that it it wasn't going to have any like sort of new chipset because it's the exact same chipset right that too uh we thought there might have been some 1080p in the screen uh which is not true either um so i'm not saying we were freaking uh messiahs here but uh at least we were realistic about it we're not over here being like the yes. dock's gonna friggin upscale it it's gonna be crazy it's gonna be four dollars you, you, you get one for your whole family uh, also, Tom Warren here from The Verge tweeted at Gary Witta and said, weird to call Bloomberg internet bullshitters because <laughs> it is really all Bloomberg's fault. <laughs> I can't draw, I can't stress that enough that they really got everybody's expectations like in, in, a, in a bunch. Um, yeah. Uh, so, I don't know. It, it, it's it's been a week i'm so happy this is this is all over but there's still people who are here being like oh this means the switch pro is going to happen next year then <laughs> so we're not mm-hmm. done like there's uh, still going to be people doing that shit and oh yeah there there are still people who question the election are you surprised <laughs> <laughs> so this is it guys this is the thing that everybody's been talking about this is the one there's not going to be another yes. one this is it Yes. There'll be another there one. Is, there, I, there'll there'll be a new Switch or a new Nintendo console in like yeah, two or three years. That's what I was gonna say. The next n- Nintendo system is just gonna be the next Nintendo system. It'll yes. be the Switch Two, or it'll have a different name altogether. Like we're not getting the Switch Pro or the Switch 4K. It's just gonna be something else. Right. 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 I mean, I think Nintendo will stick to the hybrid system because it's working for them. Yes. No, it, uh, it they might, will. It might even be like a Switch 2 or something, but uh, it'll be the it'll be the next generation of Nintendo. Yeah. We're not going to be seeing any more iterations of this thing, I don't think. Maybe a different Switch Lite, maybe? I don't know. Uh, Doubtful. Rosie in... Rosie in debates? in the chat says so ultimately is it worth to upgrade despite the oled no no uh it is literally only worth the upgrade if you care that much about the oled yeah uh it's not i'm it's, not it, even gonna say it's worth the upgrade for the LAN adapter because a LAN adapter is 30 dollars, and you that, can use any LAN adapter well not any but most <laughs> LAN adapters you can most use you don't even need work. nintendo's LAN adapters so no it's not worth an upgrade at all. If it's, you don't have a Switch and you want one, this is the one to get. Even though it's fifty dollars more, it's still worth that extra fifty dollars for the nicer screen. Yeah, nicer screen, the bigger hard drive, and the LAN adapter. 
And the kickstand. Uh, we keep forgetting about the kickstand. The kickstand's got, I think there's a there's like little quality of life tweaks that are worth it. Uh like the extra storage and, and everything. So like yeah. technically this is a Switch Pro. It's Nintendo's own <laughs> way of 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 making it worth it to yeah. uh you know uh I don't even want to say higher end gamers, but like I guess that's like the market that this thing is is sitting in. I still yeah. think they're gonna phase out the old Switch. I, I, there's no reason yeah. to even have that but again i i don't know i just feel like these are not 50 dollars upgrades these right. are these are not worth 50 dollars. This, this is worth what the switch the switch currently costs it, it's it's that oled that is making them justify it because even the vita was more expensive right with the oled in it right and then when they retooled it they took out the oled and then you know made it cheaper yeah so uh it's literally you're just paying for the oled which honestly i'm not sure is going to be worth it i will i will get them both and i mean yeah i will get it and i'll see what it looks like compared to a new one and uh mm -hmm. i i mean i that's not what we don't have we're not switch owners for the best look in gaming experience we're switch owners because yes. nintendo makes great games and it's a really convenient console so uh go fish goldfish says would you get it if you traded in an old switch to get store credit and pay the difference i don't think it's going to be worth it honestly i think i think no. that uh you're not going to get much for it um i'm trying to think like uh when i worked at gamestop i traded in i traded in our old 3ds for the new 3ds didn't i no yeah yeah you did yeah no, I still I still have our original 3ds. I, I somehow I ended up buying the new 3ds. Yeah. Somehow that ended up being worth it to me. Um. So maybe I would. I don't know if I worked at GameStop and I could like wheel and deal some sort of like uh, like like like, friggin' uh, discount and and like trade in bonus because GameStop has like weird trade in bonuses. Um, yeah. But if I was just a normie, uh. I don't think I would get it. I don't think it would be worth it at all, yeah. to be honest. Uh, and I only play docs. Zizul. So. Zizul says, if you still use a launch switch, would you get the OLED one? If, no. you have it, if you have an issue with battery life, maybe. Yes. If if not... But only that. Yeah. If not, then no. I would, I would probably still have my launch switch, honestly. Yeah, uh, I still have my launch switch. I only play in handheld most of the time, like ninety nine percent of the time, and it still works fine. Yeah, worth the upgrade from a Switch Lite. That's on you, because uh, how yeah. much do you want to play on a on a on a TV? You know. Yeah. Uh, if you, I mean, yeah, if you uh, want to get a new Switch to play on TV and you have a Switch Lite, then yeah, get get. I I, th I think if you want a new Switch, this is the one to get. However, uh, if you currently have a Switch, I don't think it's worth the upgrade. But if you have a Switch Lite and you want to play on the TV, maybe. Maybe the extra $50 is worth it. Um, anyway, I think that's all we got to say about this freaking thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, 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 it, it, it is, it yeah. is kind of a lackluster upgrade. It's yeah. like going from the Game Boy Advance to the Game Boy Advance SP. Yes, you're getting a nicer screen, but is it really worth the upgrade? I, I don't... Uh, yeah, it's not very interesting. <laughs> it, when, we, when we get <laughs> down to it, this whole thing is not very interesting. The most interesting thing is, I think, how the internet reacted to the rumors and mm -hmm. how disappointed everyone is now that they took those rumors as fact and that everybody was running with them uh because i mean again nintendo never said you were getting all of these things i am though disappointed that nintendo is charging an extra 50 bucks for uh, a screen that is what 0.6 inches bigger <laughs> yeah it's like it's really not i mean it's oled but who knows if that's even going to be th that much better looking so uh yeah basically take uh take all the whenever you see rumor if it's not nintendo specifically saying it it is not a fact yeah. it is just a rumor 
Um, so just remember that. And 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 listen to all of these uh, content creators and news outlets, and and f- f- see f- figure out for yourself who you can trust. Uh, Myra says stupid, sexy rumors. <laughs> Will, can you do me a favor? Yes, Bob. Can you read the notifications while I go pee? I think yes, we ended at Anthony Carvoni saying he's getting a doggo. Uh, yes, we did. Um, Trevor Steinberg for 100 bits. Uh, if we don't stop, he can't stop. Uh, that's true. Um, but we will figure out how to stop eventually. Uh, Ian, why not? Thank you for resubscribing. 15 months. Man of Steel, five bits. No one is pointing out that they said that they say enhanced audio, but still no Bluetooth audio. Um, we did touch upon that. Um, it, it is very weird that they still haven't included Bluetooth audio for whatever reason. I don't think it has anything to do with interfering with the Joy-Cons because you can have like a bunch of different Bluetooth things connected to a device. Uh, I've said before, I often have a Bluetooth mouse and my AirPods connected to my laptop all over Bluetooth. No interference, no problems. Uh, It just works. Uh, Maybe they could have added uh, a stronger Bluetooth card in the Switch, and that would have been worth a little bit more, like part of the $50. Um, But yeah. Uh, CWB Fernando resubscribed five months. Thank you. Uh, El Polo Loco, thank you for the subscription. Uh, Disc Disc Jew uh, resubscribed for 21 months. I like it. I mean, yeah, it's it's a good looking system, especially the white version. Uh, it's got all the things you would want if you didn't own a Switch already. This is the one to get if you can afford the extra 50 bucks. Um, because you know this thing isn't gonna go on sale anytime soon. I'm back. Where, uh, where are sem- we? Uh, uh, I just read Disc Jew with uh 21 months says I like it. <laughs> I I mean I if the original Switch didn't right. exist then yes or if this came out two years after the Switch launched instead of one instead of five yes or if I didn't I think have this, a Switch this is, yes this is this is an upgrade five years too late yeah I I mean I'll have to see how much I like it when I actually get it but uh, as of right now not looking very enticing um but i mean it is it it, it, it it's 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 just par for the course for nintendo we we this yeah. is just the obvious thing that they were going to do just a mid console iteration make it slightly better for the people who don't have one yet or are on the fence now now there's a new cool one and it fixes some of the problems it's all oh, this is maybe a little enticing anyway Alec is no semper sempre tempest thank you for the prime Alec is banking thank you for the nine months a rod dragon thank you for the two months lucas film lucas fms thank you for the four months been waiting for the pro to get my switch might wait a little more what this, <laughs> this is it this is the this one is the switch pro. this is the one that they made for you for you to get if you're not if, yeah. if you're not gonna get this one you're not gonna switch that's 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 at least our take there's going to be other people who are going to say yeah. that there's a Switch Pro coming out. I think those people are crazy. Um, Jamie Wentz, thank you for the three months. F- Lewin Mag, thank you for the five months. Five months listening, one of the best gaming podcasts. Definitely deserve a Tubi. Ask Wood about it. Uh, I'm scared to. It sounds like a, sounds like a derogatory, like Australian slang for a derogatory thing. Is it a sex thing? Just tell us if tell it's a sex thing. Tell us off the bat if it's a sex thing, because I'm not going to ask him. Spoopy Girl, thanks for the 100 bits. I wanted to get second Switch, so think we'll get this. Okay. Right. Ca- yeah, if, if you wanted a second Switch, this would be the one to get. For whatever reason, you want a second Switch. Codwall, thank you for the Prime. Picky Gamer, thank you for the 10 months. What are our options if we want Bluetooth audio, says Every Joel. Uh, Genki makes a Bluetooth adapter. That's pretty good. Um, no, no, no. 
Genki makes a Bluetooth adapter. I don't know if it's any good. I've never tried it. Um, what's the one that I have? Is it not Genki? Does Steel Series make one? Mm, no. Gully Kit is the one that I have. And this one's pretty good. Uh, I have not. Tr so this one you can plug. You can uh, connect two devices, I think. Uh -huh. Like at once. Um, but also Genki makes one. I've never tried it, but I've heard good things about it. Um, I don't know if Steel Series makes one, but that one's probably pretty. They're all the I same. Know, I know Steel Series. Steel Series makes one where you connect it to the Switch, you know, via cable, but it, you connect it to your phone via Bluetooth. Correct. And it, you can do both at the same time. Correct. That's the headset I have, and it actually, I used it yes. to play Warzone the other day, and it sounds great. Oh, it's right here. And uh, I think they discontinued it. <laughs> I mean, you can still like find it on Amazon, but it's more money than yeah. it was when it launched. Um, but it sounds great. I just got a, I just got headphone hooks off of Amazon. I'm gonna have like a wall of headphones next to me. Because I have all these freaking headphones that are just sprawled out everywhere. And now I use yeah. all, now I, I started using all different headphones for all different things, so. I gotta get, I have a headphone stand, but I think I might have to get a hook because the stand just takes up room. Yeah, it's just on Amazon. It comes with like the command strip and everything. Oh, I also got a, uh, I got a, I, I, I just finalized the order for a uh, custom neon sign that will go right there. That's gonna Man. be that that color. Uh, nice. It's it's not real neon. It's like it's it's you know LED, but it looks like neon. Yeah, yeah. So that'll that'll be a cool thing. Nice. Anyway, uh, well, we got more. We got uh, oh, picky gamer. Thanks for the ten months. Did we do that? Probably. Yeah. I don't know. And uh, Cad Wall, thank you for the subscribe. Thank you so much, guys. We're never talking about a Switch Pro again. It's the end of yes. that. Uh, I'm sure at the end of the show Finally. or in between topics, people will have more stuff to say about the Switch Pro. But uh, yeah. right now, right now, we're moving on to more topics. Only a few more. And then we can yeah. get back to Switch Pro stuff. And these next two topics can really be combined into one, uh, I think. Okay. It's all about how indie developers hate working with sony <laughs> oh i did hear about this um so so there's a lot in, in, amongst these articles um uh, i read them before the show just to get a basic summary of it basically it started when one indie developer went on twitter Let's see if i can get his name i'll also say that uh, uh they don't like working with nintendo too much either I mean, Nintendo has like at least like a a, a department. Well, well, not a department. They have more than one person that works with indie devs. But so they're still I've, not they're still not great to indie devs. From what I've gathered from these articles, um, is that no platform is perfect. Right. They've all got issues. They all have to do crappy things. But Sony is far and away the worst offender. Okay. Started in fra uh, from a Twitter tirade from from games publish game publisher uh Ian Gardner of Neon Doctrine. Um he's he unleashed a whole bunch of tweets complaining about a specific game console maker that he specifically said um was a major player and did not support Game Pass. <laughs> <laughs> so he'll, he'll leave one or two people. The problems amount to things like uh, very poor, uh, very poor like support at all. It's very hard to get in contact with anybody at Sony, whereas Xbox and Nintendo have account managers that like you can talk to and you know work with uh, if you have issues. Um, you e on the Sony end, you email them and you don't get response for sometimes months. Mm -hmm. um, Things like, you know, promotion and trying to find your game on the store uh, is very difficult, specifically on Sony platforms. 
it called um, one of the articles specifically called out that Sony charges minimum twenty five thousand dollars <laughs> for front page placement on the PlayStation Store. Mm-hmm. So uh, Xbox also has a fee, but Xbox also has other things in place to make that not necessarily a problem. Like you can get away with not paying that fee um, in order to get discovered on the Xbox marketplace. Whereas with Sony, you kind of have to do that in order to get discovered. Does the adding a game to a wish list doesn't do anything. Uh, the PlayStation blog oftentimes does not uh, talk about every single game being released or even like the most high profile games. Sony internal um, picks the games that they talk about in the blog and it's very rarely a lot of indie games. It's uh, only like the highest of high profile indie games. Kotaku here also says that while uh, paying for prominent promotion, the store requires spending at least $25,000, like you just said. But according to financial figures we've had verified by another source, if it's Sony he's talking about, that can reach as high as $200,000. Yeah. I think that's mostly about like the type of like space on the storefront you want you right. know because like like regular advertising the bigger the ad you take out the more expensive it's going to be yeah i'd imagine that every storefront has something like this so something where you can pay yeah. like for an advertising fee to get prominent placement in the store but i'm pretty sure that all these other storefronts like 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 the apple store like has right. uh things for indie games and stuff like like ways to get yeah. your game displayed prominently if it's an indie game or at least if it's like selling a lot or if it's popular or something um so you don't have to necessarily pay that much I- i'd imagine that every other store has things like it costs money to be presented prominently and stuff like that but i'd imagine that sony I- i'm not surprised if sony is is like an offender here Myra in the chat says after the crossplay stuff, Sony is just not on my radar anymore. And uh yeah, the crossplay so we, we it was it basically came out that Sony was the whole reason that uh I mean we kind of knew that Sony was the whole reason that crossplay, yeah. like playing between consoles, uh that didn't exist because Sony was kind of uh stonewalling it. And recently we saw internal emails confirming that 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 uh Sony was just straight up like, we have no reason to partner with these other companies. We're the big yeah. shot. Why should we give handouts to them, basically? Um, so um, here's Sony being Sony to me. And it's important to note that, you know, yes, charging for the front page is a big deal and that's a problem. And a part of the problem is the front page is really the best place for people to find these games because otherwise, they don't general Sony doesn't generally put these games in the new release section. Mm-hmm. I think there was a point where if you go to the new release section of the PlayStation Store, they were showing, uh, you know, the box art for games that hadn't been released yet, like Far Cry Six. And according to one developer, uh, on the Switch, they have a new release section which shows all the new releases. They have a deal section which any game that currently has a deal will go there automatically and all these other kinds of like lists and features that they just have and you don't have to pay to be a part of it and in addition to that another big problem indie developers rely on sales like the the steam sales and things like that they rely on those because that's when they see the most um people buying their games and that's where they get the biggest uh that's where they get their biggest audience. And people buying the game cheaps and then spread the word of the game. So, so, so. Nintendo spe- specifically will let you just set the price of the game. <laughs> like you can go in, you can say, I want to sell the game for a buck and they'll let you do that. On the Sony side of things, you have to be invited by Sony to participate in a sale and they set the price. So, so, so that system is kind of being exploited by people on the eShop. I, I, I made a video about right. it a while ago. Uh, so, yeah, some people no. will, will make their game like a penny 
and uh, that'll make it sell an insane amount, and then it becomes the best seller in the best sellers list, and then they raise the price again, and then it's still in the best sellers list. So Nintendo kind of fixed it by making it so you can't make the game a penny anymore, but people do two pennies yeah. or 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 a dollar. Um, yeah. So it's it's a it's a weird. Uh, it's a weird, it, it's a good thing but also uh a yeah, bad it's thing it's doing what it's supposed to but you know there there are people who are unfortunately exploiting it right but yeah, right. i think it would be better to have that option than not have it at all true because it be, is you know, at the end of the day help. we're getting one dollar games <laughs> yeah um um to just just one, take it one with the, when you see the best seller section on the eShop, just take it with a grain of salt because some of those games are probably yeah. just just artificially there um but it's things like that like some of the developers have posted like their sales breakdown um and because of all like the the things that you know xbox offers and nintendo offer and steam offers that when they post their sales breakdown you'll see like big sales on switch or big sales on steam and playstation accounts for like one percent of all sales because sony doesn't do really anything to promote indie games on their side of things they're more focused with their big triple a titles now more than anything specifically their in-house games yeah i'm really like uh sony corporate has been just showing their like how shitty they are they're, they're, it's it's yeah it, it's kind of it, like i'm not uh, i'm not a I, i've been uh, i i feel like i'm constantly shitting on sony but like i mean I love my PlayStation 4, you know? It's just that the, yeah. the, I'm not in love with the PlayStation 5. And um, and I'm, I'm disappointed with how they're handling a lot of things. Um, yeah. I, I'm on the eShop right now, and uh, I went to new releases, and it's straight up... Sh- I mean, of course, Mario Golf is at the top because they got to show their flagship game. Um, but then they just straight... Look, Rubik's Roller, like, that's not a popular game. That's just some guy's yeah. game, and it's right there because... Uh, and it's on sale by by barely anything, but it's on sale. So uh, I think Nintendo has is doing at least a better job at showing, showcasing indie stuff than yeah. the other guys. Not only, like, showcasing, but also in terms of support, because in the article it was mentioned that, you know... In- Working with ID and Xbox, which is Xbox's, you know, indie arm, they're very good at, about like getting developers dev kits. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes at like reduced price or even like for free. That's good. Whereas Sony is still holding on to the old system where you have to pay an exorbitant amount of money for a dev kit, and you might just get one. I I, I think which, the reason if you're the... working on a team like. You need more than one in order to get this, a game out. I think part of the reason why I said Nintendo is not that great with indies, um, they uh, they have a weird update system. Like, like if you want to release an update for your game, they have like a weird, rigorous like like check for like like quality check for the update. Yeah. You might even have to pay a fee, and I think they Apparently, have like weird fees with, associated with according uploading to this games. Article, Sometimes Nintendo will not let you roll out a patch larger than 200 megabytes without special permission. Right. Which uh, is very small. <laughs> uh, that, I mean, that shows what Nintendo thinks of file sizes. Um, but also, yeah. uh, when you release a game or you upload it to one of these stores, uh, you can't just give out keys to... Uh, the media and your and your friends you can't just give out keys all willy-nilly they even yeah. though it's like a freaking like uh it's not a real tangible thing it's just data like i don't understand why they can't just have as many keys as they want but um yeah. uh well i guess they have to pay for the for the distribution um but uh nintendo gives you the least amount of keys by 25 they give you 25% of what the other companies would give you. Um, wow. I'll just say it. The other companies, uh, there was one developer I talked to. Other PlayStation and Microsoft give you 1,000 keys. Uh, Nintendo gives you 250. Wow. Uh, and it's probably different per game, but there's one particular game. I don't even remember what the game was. That ended up being the case. 
Um, so yeah, Nintendo's not great either. But uh, paying two hundred and fifty dollars to get your game shown at all is kind of. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, paying twenty five thousand dollars to even get your game shown a little ridiculous. And I think somewhere in this article they said that there's one guy that handles indie stuff at at, uh, at PlayStation. Yeah. Uh, according to the, the Kotaku article, everybody's saying the big difference between Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo is communication. Um, it helps every part of the process, says one indie publisher of Microsoft's uh, process. Eric Freeman, independent developer of Deja Vu, says via Twitter... Uh, besides their cut up for sales, we've never been asked for money, and everyone on the ID and Xbox team has been incredibly nice and responsive. He went on. He went on to detail how Microsoft uh, have repeatedly invited them to be in sales, making the process simple. Heck, they even invite you to shows," said another publisher. Um, they not only invite you if you are already popular, they try to invite quality games no matter if you know them already or not. And Game Pass, Game Pass is a thing and it offers great value. Meanwhile, communication with Sony is reportedly extraordinarily difficult. Uh, Ra Ragnar Tornquist of indie, of indie developer Red Thread Games and the name of my new metal band um, <laughs> tweeted his frustrations. Uh, we're a pretty established developer with a proven track record but I honestly have no idea who, who to even contact to make console sales happen. It's like trying to be heard in the vacuum of space. Uh, little J Cub in the chat says, Shuhei Yoshida, he's the PlayStation indie guy, a legend. I don't think he is. I think he just likes indie he, games. No, I, I, he is. But I think it's just him. <laughs> so he was the president of Sony uh, International... Yeah. No, Sony Interactive Entertainment. And now yeah. he does... What does he do? What's his title now? Sony announced that Yoshida uh, had stepped down as president and amid a company reshuffle to become head yeah. of a newly formed initiative that will focus on nurturing external independent creators. Oh, so he is literally that guy. The new, initi the yeah. new initiative will focus on supporting external developers that are creating new and unexpected experiences for the gaming industry. He was replaced <laughs> by, oh, by Herman Hulst, f the former studio head of Guerrilla Games. He was replaced by, uh, yeah. f he's, uh, as president. So he's still doing the indie stuff. Yeah, he. Uh, yeah, he's still doing the indie stuff. And also, it should be noted that last year Sony created a ten million dollar fund to support indie developers uh, during the pandemic. Um, but that's not apparently enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, having like a. It's. I mean, of course, you need people to help you. You need. You need it. You need people yeah. to be at the company that that could that could help you when you need stuff to to get done, and if you want to be put on their store and what whatnot. Uh, it is. They are a platform, and you are working on their platform, so you need some sort of communication. Uh, it's all yeah. the other bullshit, like having to pay an exorbitant amount of money, having to deal with them when you want to put updates up and whatever, uh, being shown on their storefront at all. Um, all that, all that weird bureaucratic nonsense uh, makes uh, this not a pleasant experience. Uh, so. In the IGN article, it says... Um, they spoke to the developers about uh, lot checks, which is a term used by Nintendo, but it generally refers to compliance checks across all platforms. Um, and they're frustrating on all platforms, but uh, most people pointed out that PlayStation's compliance checks were by far the most, most complex in terms of process, communication, and user feedback. So just to even get on the platform, Sony is like very hard to communicate with in terms of like what you need to do to even get on the store, not even the front page. The moral of the story is if you are creating a game uh, or if you're an indie dev, uh, I mean, start off on itch.io. <laughs> it's, yes. it's like, it's the easiest thing to do. Um, and then check out Microsoft. 
they they they're 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 there with open arms come over here we'll give you some money go on game pass we don't give a shit uh and also nintendo's probably fine uh playstation only deal with playstation if you have a publisher that's willing to deal with playstation (laughs) yeah um and if you don't want to update your game ever um i i just realized this was two topics Charging devs twenty five yeah, thousand and and Sony being difficult to work with. Yeah, uh, f- what? Because first the the twenty five thousand dollar article came out, and then the next day it was, you know, it's not just that. Mm. So anyway, uh, what else do we got here, Will? Uh, what else we got? We got commercials uh, coming. To video hey, you games? know what? Every- Keep your video game. Keep you know what everybody likes when you watch TV shows and you know. Halfway through, you gotta watch an ad for, uh, I don't know, what what do kids what do, what ads are there on TV nowadays? The Taco Bell VPN. Dogs still alive. Be, be careful what you say, Will, because there are ads in Wolf Den videos. <laughs> I know. Uh, you might get accosted well, by a trade ad. Yeah. <laughs> After months of testing, marketers are finally going to be able to start running video ads within console and PC games. Uh, in-game advertising, a linchpin of mobile gaming, could uh, could be a very lucrative for console and PC developers, but studios have been hesitant to adopt them, fearing that a clunky ad experience would mess with user engagement. A first-of-its-kind in-game advertising platform called Player One, uh, one spelled oh, no. W-O-N because fuck you, uh, <laughs> launches this week, allowing big-name marketers that are used to running splashy TV ads uh, the ability to target younger demographics with similar types of spots that will run in video games. The platform, which is owned and operated by Simul Media, a TV ad tech company, will let users determine whether they want to watch a 15 or 30 second video ad in exchange for being able to unlock exclusive gaming perks. Simul Media has struck deals with some of the world's biggest gaming studios, including Electronic Arts. And Tencent's high-res studios, um, it's EVP Gaming and OTT Dave Madden told Axios. Uh, how it works. Simul Media, which has been testing console gaming ads for over a year, collects and vets ad spots from big brands that would typically run on TV. Using the technology, developers can code these ads into their games. They can, They can then decide which rewards to provide gamers in exchange for them to agree to watch the ad. Uh, through its ad server, Simul Media is able to see whether an ad is completed. It then sends a notification that you can uh, release rewards to the player. Rewards can vary from in-game currency to skins uh, for your game avatars. In its research, Simul Media has found that players are willing to watch up to 10 ads per day in order to unlock free perks. The company is able to calculate how much video inventory it needs to provide gaming companies uh, by multiplying a game's daily active user count by 10. Uh, The acceleration of free-to-play games across console and PC like Fortnite, Apex Legends, and Call of Duty Warzone, and Roblox means that audiences and playtime have seen explosive growth, yet the vast majority of players, over 90%, never spend money in free-to-play games, uh, according to Madden. Marketers need ways to reach younger gamers, young gaming audiences, ages 18 to 34, that are mostly cord cutters. Uh, In-game ads are cheaper and more efficient than brand integration, which is what advertisers have, uh, which is what advertisers have working with to date. Uh, Because that, because that audience is so highly sought after, streamers are able to charge a premium for digital TV ads that target younger uh, consumers, in-game ads, which are controlled by the gamer, are much cheaper um, per Simul Media. Data from one of uh, Simul Media's pilot campaigns with Smite, a free-to-play multiplayer battle arena game from Tencent's high-res studios, shows that players were much more likely 22% to play a game and spend money within the game 11% if they watched in-game ads then gave them access to more game, gaming perks. Uh, this, all right, oh, we're almost over, thank God. 
uh, <laughs> by a, a 2020 analyst from Morgan Stanley finds that a reward based console advertising could reach two billion dollars, even if only 45 percent of gamers opt in. Ads that run twice per hour would have an advan- an average cost per thousand uh, of roughly twenty dollars, which is dramatically cheaper than what most marketers would pay to run ads on TV or even via some streaming services. Uh, Madden said the goal is to continue building out a network of advertisers and games that they can connect through its platform, growing the nascent in-console ad market. It plans to launch in-game ads in roughly a dozen more games by year's end. Suki Ga- Suki Kagura in the chat says advertisers hate gaming content very low buying power lots of kids this won't work that's a pretty good point uh I want to note that this isn't new uh games have been doing this for a while um there's been like weird sort of ad placements in games like here's uh this looks like uh midnight club or something i don't know what this is yeah uh, well uh, but that that's an m&m's ad here's spider-man with the disney x xd ad uh here's here's so, our good boy mario driving a, a mercedes <laughs> so this this is different this is product placement this is when uh a company pays a fairly high price have their name or their logo or whatever uh, put somewhere in the game mm-hmm. as part of the game world. This is specifically referring to the game stops. You watch a 30 second commercial. Oh, and then the game goes back. Oh, we don't like that. Will. that's what this is referring to. That is bad. You're sitting, you're a sitting there, you're playing. Yeah. You're sitting there, you're playing, let's say you're playing uh, Madden 2021. Mm-hmm. You're sitting there, you you, you play, the, the first quarter is over, and just like on regular TV, if you watch football on regular TV, when the first quarter is over, you get an ad break. And you have to sit there and watch commercials, and then it goes back to the game itself. That's what this is referring to. That is, that is a mid-roll ad in a game, and that's not cool. And that, now, now, video games... Uh, we, we talk about this a lot. Video games now seventy dollars, sixty or seventy dollars for a brand new AAA game. Uh, that is very cheap. It's it. They haven't. They basically haven't budged since uh, home console gaming started. Um, mm-hmm. They should. Be, and, and, but the cost of making a game is way more now. So that yeah. price should have gone up games should cost around a hundred dollars now if we're being real um but uh game game companies are finding ways to nickel and dime you like like dlc like like in-game skins and in-game content whatever premium additions yes uh and this is one way for them to subsidize it this is a nasty dirty way to do it but it is possible and i can imagine companies like ea Getting a couple of bucks for your views. Yeah. Uh, this is... I don't like this. <laughs> I, I think this is bad. I think this is uh, invasive. I think this is going to blow up in their face. Because mm-hmm. um, people still view game video games as things for children. And mm-hmm. there are very strict laws about advertising the children yeah so all it's gonna take is one screw up mm-hmm. and we're gonna have a whole other we're gonna have the loot box controversy all over again right so i don't see this lasting very long if it even gets off the ground uh i i have a weird relationship with mid-roll ads because uh i, I mean i you know that's uh, how we make some money I know that's part of YouTube, but I had YouTube premium for a really long time. So I think, I think I was one of the first people to to get onto YouTube premium. Cause I was like, I watch a lot of YouTube. Yeah. I don't want any ads. This look, this seems great. I'm getting YouTube premium. Um, so that was like around when mid rolls like launched. So I got 
YouTube Premium and I never got ads. And uh, everyone, then mid-rolls launched, everyone was pissed about it. And then years later, everybody's kind of like just conformed and gave up. And I yeah. was completely against mid-roll ads. I never put mid-roll ads in my videos and whatever. Uh, and then one, like two years ago, I decided on one random video that was like 25 minutes long. I was like, I'll put one mid-roll in the middle of the video. Um, Cause I deserve it. It's 25 minute long video. And then when I was doing our like, you know, finances for the end of the month, I saw this video made like twice as much as all the other videos, but it didn't even get that many views. Why did it make twice as much? Oh, it's because there's a, there's one mid roll and people are, are just conditioned to be fine with mid rolls now. So now you might see one or two mid rolls in our videos. (laughs) So, uh, that's my weird relationship. Other YouTubers put like a billion mid rolls because YouTube by default puts a yeah. billion mid rolls into a video. Um, uh, Ray F was his YouTube ad block. I will block you if you use ad block. Piece of garbage. Uh, it's like going into a it's like going into a friggin' McDonald's and just running behind the counter and taking your food. Um, yeah. Anyway. I think this is totally possible that we're going to see mid rolls in, in video games. I think it is the worst yeah. thing that could happen. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna. Uh, this is gonna be because imagine because there's, there's rumor we didn't put this in the thing because I don't think it's worth talking about. There's rumors that EA is going to bring back Dead Space. Right. So imagine you're playing Dead Space. It's a horror game. You're in the middle of a, of a really tense scene where you're walking through an abandoned corridor there's blood on the wall the lights are flickering you hear things everywhere you're really scared you're really nervous and then all of a sudden subway would like to introduce you to the new five dollar foot long with uh ham and turkey and all this other crap that doesn't even taste like ham and turkey that would be at the end of the level probably (laughs) probably but the, the point remains you're in the middle of this like tense experience and it, it just gets ruined with an ad it's like getting hit in the face with a hammer <laughs> yeah but it, you know what in madden i totally see it it'll give you the whole in it'll madden, give you the whole football sense. experience because it's you're getting yeah. it's like a commercial and that's what you get with football yeah um i, I now what if they what if they give you some free to play like what if they make dead space free to play or seventy dollars and if it's free to play you get the ads and if it's seventy dollars you don't get the ads mm. like like how the mobile market was like like a few years ago i don't know i might just pay the seventy dollars i would definitely pay the seventy dollars but if i didn't have I- seventy dollars i think that might be worth it because i mean that's those are two different types of games. A console game like Dead Space is supposed to be a more like immersive cinematic mm-hmm. experience, whereas a mobile game is something that you pick up and play for five minutes while you wait for the bus or you're on the toilet. You know, I, it's I, two very different types of games. I think having the so option... ad for a mobile game is different. Well, that's what I, I, I think having the option to play the game with ads uh, for free, I think that might be worth it to some people. I guess. But if, they, if I'm, if I'm be, paying like, you money, I don't want a fucking ad. <laughs> yeah. I already paid. I don't need any more. You know? Hulu does that, don't they? You, They still have commercials even if you paid for it? A lot of them do that. It, it's That's... Hulu, um, Paramount Plus, Peacock, HBO Max now has a version like that. I mean... That's different because that's TV, and I'm used to that with TV. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not used to that with my video games. I don't <laughs> want that in my video games. Oh, Kikoba with 20 months. Does Will have any hot takes on the air fryer? What air fryer? Uh, I, I'm i actually disappointed in my air fryer because I tried <gasps> making french fries in it last week, and they were not crispy enough for my satisfaction. You just reminded me I have french fries in the fridge. Oh, How long? try... I s- what? How long do French fries last in the fridge? 
Uh, when did you buy them? Friday. My general rule of thumb is a week for anything in the fridge. Okay. All right, I got time. I'm getting a whole new I'm going to try reheating those fries in the air fryer tomorrow, see, see how that turns out. <laughs> Give it a second turn, try. Turn up the heat in it. Make, make them crispy. I like my fries crispy. Uh, last bit of news before we turn it over to you guys. Uh, yes. Kojima is doing an Xbox exclusive? Uh, insider Jeff Grubb reports that Microsoft and Kojima have signed a letter of intent for a new game. Oh. This is not an official binding contract, importantly, but it seems to point to the possibility that Kojima's next game will be made for Xbox, the name that Microsoft gives to the Xbox and PC games, um, Grubb cites uh, the information to his unnamed sources. Uh, this is a key step in the negotiations between the Metal Gear Solid creator and the Xbox company. This signifies that both parties have agreed to a generalized deal while lawyers continue hashing out the finer points. According to the report, Microsoft and Kojima have been working behind the scenes for months already regarding a partnership. A deal is so close that Microsoft has begun preparing uh, for what Kojima will need to make his new game. A uh, report goes on to say that Kojima's new game will be made at least in part for the cloud. Microsoft just recently oh. hired portal, portal developer Kim Swift to run the company's new initiatives for cloud-based gaming, and Kojima will be among them, says the report. Oh. We don't know what Kojima's game will be, and it's not at the crux of this announcement, apparently. Uh, the report that the the report that the thrust of the deal between Microsoft and Kojima is to unlock the creativity of Kojima Productions using Microsoft's technology as opposed to greenlighting a specific pitch. It is still early days, um, and neither Microsoft nor Kojima have made any official announcements about this. We've contacted Microsoft in an attempt to get more detail. Xbox boss Phil Spencer may have dropped clues about the reported Kojima deal as a Ludin statue from Death Strandings can be seen in his office in the background for public video calls. It's possible this is not connected in any way beyond fandom, however. Kojima is still in business with Sony as Death Stranding, the director's cut, is in the works for PlayStation 5. Yeah, so uh, in those, I think they said that in those conference calls every once in a while, uh, like there's some stuff in the back and they're always like, you didn't even notice there was an Xbox yeah. controller in well, the back. Because it started with, he had a Series S in the background right, for one of his calls, like months before it was announced. And then Todd Howard had the fertility idol from the beginning of Raiders in a call months before the Indiana Jones uh, reveal right uh so, so it's, it's something that they've done uh yeah i don't think that they put anything behind them uh by accident i think that everything yeah. back there has a reason um i wouldn't be surprised if uh yeah if they, I, I, well jeff grubb uh has a good track record we we like him and we think yes. that i believe in him uh so but again this they even say in this article it doesn't it's not a binding contract it just means they might be yeah. working on something He's like, we want to work with you. Okay, uh, let's let lawyers figure things out, and I'll say I'll work with you. <laughs> yeah, so this is probably a really f ways out before we even hear anything more yeah. about this. Um, it could also be something about, isn't, didn't Death Stranding, uh, what well, came to PC? Yes. Yeah. Well, Sony published Death Stranding, so that's a Sony game. Okay. Um. So yeah, I mean, I, it is weird for Japanese companies to work with Microsoft because uh, Xboxes don't sell in Japan. Uh, right. Apparently the Series S is selling well in Japan. Good, because the Series S is yeah. fucking awesome. I love the Series S. Also, yeah. I was thinking about it today. Uh, uh, 1080p gaming, Series S is the cheapest current gen console. If, yes. you, if you put it uh but so is the switch but uh they're neck and neck yeah. for 1080p gaming but the series yeah. s could also do 1440p mm -hmm. um so i think the series s is is is, is like criminally uh overlooked i have it right here next to me um anyway 
uh so yeah don't don't i mean i'm excited for kojima to potentially work with microsoft but let's not get our hopes up because this again that yeah. isn't like a confirmation of anything it's not finalized um but that said i don't i wouldn't be surprised if he works because kojima productions is not owned by sony it's its own thing so they can go off and do whatever they want and i right. think working with microsoft would be a nice uh, change of pace for them true i agree uh anyway uh that's all the news yes I never pulled the tweet of the week. You did not. I, 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 I will today. It was a busy day. <laughs> you could believe it or not. Oh. Oh, why? Was there Nintendo news? <laughs> uh, you know what? Don't worry. It's not important. Uh, here's here. We'll do this one. Here's one. This is by uh, okay. the funny the funny underscore MP4, and it's a GIF that says. Ten dollars plus three hundred. Uh, I'm sorry. Ten dollars <laughs> plus three fifty shipping. Ew! And it's like a gif of a dog swatting food away. Fourteen ninety nine free shipping. Come here, give me a handshake. Oh yeah, this is a great deal. Get it? Cause I, I it, there's a lot of math. This is a very math heavy joke. Yeah. But I'm on board. I am always like I'd rather have free shipping than uh, than pay for shipping, even if it's even more if expensive. it costs the same price. Yes. <laughs> Yes, it's real. It's no, true. I I currently have a hat sitting in my Amazon cart of if I got a different color version of the hat with the color I wanted, it would be, you know, I have to pay for shipping. Whereas the other version is the same price, but it's free. It's free Prime shipping. But that's a, that's another thing. You're getting the Prime shipping. You're getting the the, yeah. the two day shipping. That's important the the well not just that like if it says prime shipping then there's there's at least a, a small guarantee of the fact that you're gonna get what you paid for <laughs> you know because yeah, it's, like, it's like official where, like, yeah it's like i bought from a third party and they've they've taken my money true um i forgot to do the tweet of the week song so this is for everybody who is upset <laughs> Sorry about it. Sorry about it. There you go. Now it's official. Uh, anyway, now we'll talk to you guys. Yes. If you left a comment on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast, and this is the part of the show where we will finally answer you. And of course, and gentlemen watching us at home, please start leaving your questions and comments so we will get to them when we are done with everybody else. Last week's Wolf Den Live, what did we talk about, Will? Do you remember? Are you there? Hello? Yeah, hi. What did we talk oh. about last week? Sure. <laughs> uh, I don't remember either. Anyway, Keyhole says, I'm kind of sad they're not releasing the train controller outside of Japan. That's what we talked about. At least let like, oh, yeah. Europe have it. We love trains. Choo-choo, Nintendo. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's true. <laughs> yeah, a lot of least, trains over there. They're releasing a, uh, a train controller in Japan for for yeah. uh, uh, Densha de Go. Uh, that's the game. Anyway, Henrique yes. Persecini says, I watched the Super Mario World widescreen VOD, and it was painful not being able to participate in the chat. I, I, here I... I here... Here I was thinking you were a Mario guy. I didn't play much Super Mario World. The chat was trying to navigate me through Super Mario World, and uh, I gotta be honest, you guys were doing a terrible job. I blame yeah. you for all of the problems that I had. I don't know. Super Mario World was like the first Mario game with multiple paths to each mm -hmm. level, and like there are some paths that are better optimized than others, and there are some that'll get you to different levels and whatnot. Just play the game. Just play so, the game like you would a regular Mario game. You'll eventually get to the end. The clips video will be going up tomorrow uh, on the YouTube.com slash Wolfden Clips channel. Uh, it is a great mod. It's it's just a widescreen version of Mario World, but uh, yeah. it had to, it had to be you know that, a lot of changes had to be made to make that work. Um, so that'll be up tomorrow. I I might also be making a video this week on Mario uh, uh, hacks. Like 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 that like the widescreen mod. Yeah. Um. 
but that being said, uh, everything was all fine and dandy, and I wanted to try to beat the game in in that one stream, so that's why Chad was helping me like find the best path. I got to Bowser, and uh, the guy who made the widescreen mod forgot to make the ground wider on the Bowser fight, so you could just fall off the edge where the 4x3 ends. Uh. So, just a little flaw in that. <laughs> um, anyway... Nader Potator 24 says, uh, Star Fox Assault was a great game, damn it. What was gimmicky about it? The land portions? Sure, they weren't great, but I loved the shit out of that game. I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember anything about Assault. Uh, yeah. All I remember about that game was like every review I read at the time said, yes, the R Wing sections are great, they're fantastic. The on foot missions dragged the whole game down. I remember one review in particular said, This is like hanging out with a friend who you haven't seen in a really long time, and he brings his girlfriend with you. <laughs> Damn. Like, that's. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> I've been in that situation. Um, where else am I? De Devin Law, Deja fucking boo, man. When you guys started talking about In the Heights, I paused, checked what episode I was on, I thought I fell into a wormhole. Did we? Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure we talked about yeah. it twice in That's, two different episodes. This is now three weeks in a row that In, in the Heights has been brought up on this podcast. Uh, we're not. We're not doing that again. Patrick. We're not. We're not yet. Hayes says, uh, what are your thoughts on the new Pokemon Unite coming out next month? July, question mark. Also, what are your thoughts of them putting it on iOS and Android later this year? I didn't Wait, know. Which one was Pokemon Unite? The MOBA. The free-to-play MOBA. Oh. I think right. it's great. Uh, it looks. I think it looks pretty cool. It might get me interested in the MOBA genre. Uh, I... Yeah. I kind of want to play it on iOS, though. I kind of don't want to play it on the Switch. It looks like a mobile-friendly game, and I I actually like mobile games. Uh, I I think it's for certain games, it's the most convenient form factor. If there's no like, and this looks like a game where I'm going to want a touch screen, so uh, yeah. I I kind of would rather have it on mobile. I didn't know it was releasing at different times. Is that true? I don't know. I'm looking it up. Uh, uh yeah uh yeah nintendo switch july 2021 i guess i mean hopefully it'll have touchscreen integration on the switch um yeah. ios and android september that's crazy i didn't know that i think they had a beta already and i didn't play it but uh i'll try it when it comes out maybe if there's nothing else going on all right Mega Dragon with 100 bits. Hiya again, bros. Currently trying to get back into live streaming games after purchasing a new Blue Yeti mic last night. Do you bros have any advice on how to grow an audience for your channel on YouTube, on Twitch, or YouTube? No. Um, it's very difficult to grow an audience on Twitch. It's very, very hard. Um, I, I guess you need to also... I mean, YouTube, it's easy for me to say that it's easier on youtube because that's where i did it but uh i can't imagine growing something from scratch on twitch and only being on twitch i feel like you gotta put stuff out there on youtube because it's easier to find people to watch it on youtube the, the discovery algorithm is better on youtube also tiktok tiktok's great tiktok's discovery algorithm is awesome Especially for beginners with, with no yeah. followers or viewers at all. I would say consistency. Yes. Um, do it often. Uh, I, know, I know we've talked before, like, pick a day to release uh, your content on and do that every, like, if you pick Wednesday, do it every Wednesday. I would say in the beginning... Do it more often than one day a week, because we're we're at a point where everybody thinks they can just be a streamer, and if you want to stand out, you have to really stand out. Do more. Well, so for for specifically live streaming, you have to stream a lot. Yes, but yes. it's 
arguably more important to put content on other platforms to drive viewers to your stream mm -hmm. so um yeah you need you do need to do it a lot but i think consistency is more important than uh uh quantity if that makes sense because uh consistency forces you to put a lot out there kind of like like the only reason that we exist right now is because we did it uh, every week we each put something yes. out there every single week um so uh yeah to be consistent about it uh quality over quantity says just the vagabond unfortunately that is not the case in the youtube world yeah. <laughs> or, or in the content yeah. creation world you, you, sometimes you can put out crap as long as you put something out like on time <laughs> i i think that there is there is room for quality over quantity i think that there's plenty of youtubers that spend a lot of time oh, dropping yeah, no. one great video every once in a while but yeah, no there's it's a, are it's an incredibly difficult way to to grow an that, audience that is an elite tier yeah that is an elite tier that chances are you're not going to be a part of yes um man of steel with five bits i for, oh good luck mega dragon man of steel with five bits i forgot to do a manual ad placement on a one hour stream one time and youtube placed 13 ads with the algorithm that's crazy i mean nice. i let i let youtube place ads on the podcast and uh clips channels because i just can't be bothered and also those channels don't make any money so we're i actually we operate both of those channels at a loss so uh i'm taking what i can get <laughs> um anyway now we're in the chat chat mm -hmm. chat chat ash ja, ja nine says uh bob you're my decided internet boyfriend no thank you no 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 keanu reeves ain't got shit on you uh no 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 oh, he's got shit on everybody no 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 yeah also yeah keanu reeves got shit on everybody keanu reeves go go with keanu reeves <laughs> yeah always go with keanu reeves <laughs> um uh vu man i was gonna say i i always tell people i'm their internet dad but if you start with telling me your boyfriend no, just no just nope yeah <laughs> uh, vu mando says bought switch first time two weeks ago want another dock can't find a new one anywhere if you buy a refurb then need an ac adapter is 30 dollars. that's 70 not really worth it would you consider the bb no 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 actually maybe does insignia uh, still make their dock that's that's what they're referring because to because for the longest time that yeah so i think it's now called the Rocketfish because that's that's insignia okay. and Rocketfish are best buy's brand they're both owned by best buy yeah um that was the only third-party dock that uh nintendo linked to on their own official website so uh that's a big maybe if it's that much cheaper but i would still recommend just get it just sucking it up and getting a refurbished uh uh doc uh edward says will richard donner superman and lethal weapon director has died at age 91 what fun memories do you have for those movies uh a lot uh i was actually watching superman the movie last night because i just wanted to watch it again because it is still the best superman movie and you cannot fucking convince me otherwise it's so good and it's so pure and it understands that superman is more than just this guy with a lot of cool powers that can do a lot of cool things he is an alien that is also more human than anybody else on the planet uh he is kind he's compassionate and when lois asks him who are you he says a friend because that's what superman is he is a friend. Also, the Lethal Weapon movies are fucking awesome. I recommend everybody see it. Hot take. Lethal Weapon 1 is more of a Christmas movie than Die Hard is. I will Damn. stand by that. Has one of my favorite moments in a Christmas movie ever when Gary Busey is in uh, Danny Glover's house trying to find him. And the TV turns on. 
and it's uh, a Christmas Carol, and Ebenezer Scrooge is like, what day is it? So Gary Busey shoots the TV and says, God damn it, it's Christmas! And keeps shooting the TV. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Edward Bobo also says, Bob, what do you think about the Nintendo Life article about Miyamoto discusses Minions, producers, outside director? I have no idea what you're talking about. I think you me you mentioned this last week. I have no idea what um, Miyamoto think... discussion you're talking about. So I think this is referring to uh, somebody from Illumination Studios who create who create the Minions franchise and the Spickle Me franchise, who are also making the Super Mario Brothers movie. Oh, is now on the board of directors at Nintendo. Oh, that's pretty cool. That that yeah. means that they're very serious okay. about making a, a yes movie content. Yeah, uh, it's um that means that like they're there's gonna be a tighter collaboration. That means that there's going to be less chance that we're going to get a repeat of the 90s Mario movie. Right. So. Uh, what are you doing, Rue? Oh, it's his bone. He always, oh, always, look what he did. Look what this asshole did. It's my nice Inti Creates bag. And he, he freaking uh, he ripped the, he ripped the thing. I got to put it against my skin so you can see it. Look at that. What an asshole. Uh. Uh, Mecha Dragon, Dogs, man. Uh, 45 bits. I love how Will looks like he's in a 90s movie with that quality. Also, thanks for the good luck, Bob. No problem. Uh, Will looks like a Kaza rip of a 90s movie. Yes. <laughs> Vu Mando, thank you for the Prime uh, subscription. Tyler PM, thank you for the 13 months. Howdy, howdy to you. Uh, you can re sew it. I, I do have a, I do have a. But it's never going to be the same. It's not going to be the same uh, integrity because it's the it's the handle part, you know. Okay. Uh, Something I found. I'm back. I I looked up the Rocket Fish dock for a Switch. Uh huh. And it's referred to as the Rock. It's it's fifty bucks. But you get it open box and it's thirty five. And it's called the Dock Kit. Oh. I want to know, does that mean it's one of those situations where you have to current no, switch? No, no, no. Because cause it's, uh, I think they're calling it the kit because it comes with the freaking adapter. And that's a big okay, deal. Okay, yeah. Them. Yeah. And maybe, I guess it, it probably comes with comes an with, AC adapter. Yeah. Does it come with an HDMI cable? Because that would, it says everything you need to charge and play on a TV. It should come with an HDMI adapter then. Uh, what's I mean, included? HDMI. AC adapter, quick start guide, uh, TV dock. No, it doesn't come with an HDMI cable. Well, then they're lying. That's a lie. Uh, well, to be fair, like HDMI cables are like five bucks, and you don't even Not need a Best Buy. high speed one. You're going to be spending True. a pretty penny at Best Buy. This is the don't Insignia one. Don't buy HDMI one, though. cables from Best Buy. This is the yeah. exact same thing as the Insignia one. Uh, hey Bob, love your content. Thank you for always making me smile and giving me hope for a, a better da. Thank you, F uh, Foxster. I'm I'm happy to be here. Um, Cecil MC says, if you watch Street Fighter as a comedy, it's kind of awesome. LOL. Oh yeah, it's very very funny. And shockingly better than the more serious version that they made a few years ago. Suki, Sui Kagura says, Garage was the top seller in June. Have you played it on stream? Uh, yes. You can go to youtube.com slash Wolfden Clips. There might be two videos of it. I don't remember. Is there just one? I, I did play it on stream. Uh, there, there's some very interesting... Uh, games on there uh it's pretty yeah. it's pretty freaking cool um i only have one video yeah one video on the wolf den clips channel um it's a great video though it's, it's, it's a fun time you should go watch that plenty of great content over on the wolf den clips channel uh but yeah there's a lot of good you can so there's a website called uh garage tool uh what is it Game Builder Garage Games. There's a website for it. That's really cool. 
my garage my garage dot games here it is check it out uh you go to new or hot this week that's good and you can just straight up find like awesome games that people are working on and you can even go here this is interesting they have um like nodes you can like download so like uh somebody had a good one that was uh just like the system for uh um uh a side scroller you know like you could just download and edit what they already have so oh that's basically cool. like assets like a game assets it's it's, it's yeah, pretty yeah. freaking cool um what's this one yeah i can't i can't find one of the assets but but yeah no this is a great website you should check this out if you're into game builder garage or if you all have right. the game at all check this website out because it's freaking sick um bob when will you do a regular stream thursday night i might do one tomorrow uh my whole schedule got all fucked this week thanks to the nintendo um mm-hmm. but uh yeah i'll probably stream tomorrow and and then again on thursday so speaking of which thanks for hanging out everybody Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So go check us out over there so you can watch us on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud. That's the old version. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash YouTube <laughs> podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice, which includes Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, and all that crap. No matter where you get your Wolf Den podcast from, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with uh, placement on all of those respective platforms. You went back in time just now. I do, so, dude. Sometimes it's it just slips in. I fight really hard not to revert back to the old ways. <laughs> that was crazy. Uh, all right, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Make sure you check out the video that I posted today if you haven't already on the main channel. Uh, also, uh, Wolf Den clips. There's plenty of great videos over there right now. Uh, we should go watch. How about Anthony Carboni? is playing uh uh he's playing majora's mask and he's dressed as jasmine <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand yes. uh go 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 help me understand uh i'll see y'all later uh, thanks for being here go say hi at the very least or i'd be good be be a good little community and go say hi to princess jasmine over there um goodbye bye